So uh, good afternoon. I'm Florana Petrone from UNR Lawrence Lab. And with this uh, short presentation, I'm going to give you an overview about the project it was funded by uh, Power Trans and started uh, just a couple of three months ago in June 2022. So it's going to be more like an overview about what is coming rather than an update about what we are, uh, have done so far. Uh, so the project is entitled uh, Hazard Bates Risk and Cost Benefit Assessment of Temporary Bridges in California. And as it was just mentioned, so I'm the chair in the project and I'm working with Professor Sashi Kuna from UC Davis as co -PI. And we're gonna have two grad students joining our team uh, shortly. So, um, well, before just I start, just a little bit of background about what is, the, what is the overarching motivation and goal of this project. So uh, currently there is no general consensus on what hazard level should be utilized for the design of uh, temporary bridges. So we know that uh, according to the uh, SEC uh, 2019, um, ordinary bridges are designed for hazard level corresponding to 5% of the peers, which would correspond to about 975 years return period. Now extending this same approach to the design of uh, temporary bridges whose lifespan is about five years would be clearly overly conservative and uh, not economical. And so in 2011, Caltrans issued a memo uh, to uh, the designers advocating the use of uh, design spectra based on a return period, a reduced return period of 100 years. However, still today, so we are lacking a broad basis uh, of, um, of hazard-based studies that can actually support and inform uh, a decision about what will be the most appropriate level of hazard to utilize for temporary bridges, bridges which once again have uh, just a return period Okay, have, uh, just a, a, a maximum lifespan uh, of five uh, years. And so in this context, this study uh, is going to uh, uh, develop a, a systematic analysis of the uh, performance and expected damage of temporary bridges for that range of levels further. So spanning from just return periods from 50 to 200 uh, years. And this will be done um, for just different sites in California as I will show uh, in a second. And with the final objective of establishing reliable guidelines for the design of temporary bridges. Now, just getting this, uh, uh, to the uh, actual, just specific objectives of the project. So we first want to assess the current conference procedure for temporary bridge design. And then we want to provide, develop a performance cost matrix displaying the performance level and the corresponding cost benefit ratios of different bridge models. And when we talk here about ratios, we really refer to uh, the cost and corresponding performance of just different alternate solutions compared to the current solutions. So the current design done according, remember to that 100 just years return period. And then we want to finally just propose recommendations. What would be just the uh, most appropriate hazard level for the design of temporary bridges, which refers to two uh, different uh, uh, um, critical damage states. So one, one, will, one will be the uh, repairable damage, and the other uh, 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 limit state will be the no uh, collapse. Now, uh, the whole project is uh, just articulated, as you can see here, in just four separate tasks. And I'm going to just uh, quickly walk through uh, just each of these tasks today. So uh, in task number one, so we are going to create a, a library of numerical models uh, of typical temporary bridges uh, uh, in California. You will see just four separate locations in California. This will be all done in uh, open seas. So we have four locations, four just baseline reference bridges, which we reflect the current design approach. And then we will have for each of them two alternate uh, uh, models. So for a total of like 12 just bridges. Then in task number two, we are going to well select the ground motions and then we're going to evaluate the uh, uh, structural response for each of these bridges as obtained from the full set of nonlinear dynamic analysis, dynamic simulations. Then in task number three, we are going to perform a bridge life uh, cycle cost analysis for uh, each of these models. And finally, task number four, which will really just collect all the results of the, just the, uh, uh, um, uh, the other tasks, we're going to develop a performance cost matrix for each bridge variant and has a level. And we will provide recommendation, but just most important, we will provide the basis for some informed, just uh, for making some informed decision, hazard-based and risk-based uh, decision. Now, uh, well, starting from just task um, uh, one, uh, so subtask 1A and 1B. So uh, as I mentioned, we have, uh, well, together with the Caltrans team, we have selected these four just locations for uh, our study. And so we have 
uh, two locations, Sacramento here and San Luis Obispo, which are representative of moderate uh, seismicity sites. And then two sites, uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles, which, which are representative of uh, just high seismicity uh, uh, sites. And then for just each of the sites, we will consider what the current level of hazard, which in this spot here is represented by this uh, black dotted line, and then at least two alternate levels. And here are some uh, just preliminary results. We've studied looking into uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, uniform hazard spectra at three just alternate levels. So we'll, which would be just 2.5% in 10 years, with, uh, um, uh, hazard level, then 5% in 10 years, and then here 20% in 10 uh, years. And we're also looking at different, as you can see here, uh, site conditions just to broaden the applicability of this just guidelines of this, the results of this study, just more uh, just uh, uh, site conditions. And so to just really uh, make them the, the, the conclusion of this study just applicable to different cases. Uh, then, uh, Task, C, uh, task one, uh, just one C. So we have just uh, finalized that once again, just this is the result of a dialogue with the Calcron scheme, the, uh, uh, the scheme, the uh, just procedure that we want to follow for the design of the baseline bridge and the ultimate bridges. And so the idea is to consider as a target period, uh, just one second, which will be, uh, Okay, which will be, be uh, just here, the typical, just fundamental period of uh, just temporary bridges according to just, uh, just the uh, uh, culture uh, set of, of practice. And then we will select just one uh, hazard level. So starting from the highest one. So here, just we're looking at the 2.5% in uh, 10 years. And then we will determine the same uh, spectral oxidation, the fundamental period of the structure for all the other locations. So pretty much as you see, just represented in this just plot here. And then we will select a baseline column and cross section this side with the highest seismicity. And perturb this design here, by changing either the uh, uh, reinforcement ratio or uh, just the uh, column size to adapt the design to different levels of hazard, as you see just reflected here, and then for all each for each location. Okay, so at the end of this, we will just come up with twelve different designs, and um, of course uh, we will then. Uh, just check the behavior of these uh, columns with sugar analysis to establish the capacity and ductility, and we will make sure that our just final design will conform with the just requirements, uh, just uh, 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 caltrans requirements in terms of ductility, maximum minimum enforcement, and uh, just the details of uh, this side. Now, uh, then once we have this twelve just models of temporary bridges, so we are going just to model these just bridges in uh, uh, open sea. So here I'm showing this uh, um, two column band uh, starting based on uh, just uh, conversations with the Caltrans engineers. Uh, this solution, constructive solution, seems to be the most appropriate for temporary bridges. So we have reinforced columns and then uh, just superstructure prefabricated, precast prefabricated structure. It just just is placed on this uh, just two column bands and um, either just an acro bridge or um, uh, a, 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 a pre stress uh, precast uh, hollow section uh, deck. In any case, so in our model, the way this deck is going to uh, just be modeled is with um, an elastic element with distributed uh, mass. And um, then the column themselves, so here, you see representation of what will be our modeling approach, uh, we utilize a combination of just plastic hinge and elastic elements. But the plastic hinges will uh, just utilize the uh, 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 concrete and uh, just steel models able to capture the onset of buckling and onset of cracking or concrete uh, just crashing. And the foundation uh, and uh, buffment will be just modeled with a combination of springs. And so once again, this uh, modeling approach will be utilized for just 12, a total of 12 uh, models. Then moving to uh, just task number two. So once we have this just full library or over open seas models, we will utilize those models to models to perform fully nonlinear uh, time history uh, analysis. And, um, and this will include, uh, just we will apply both the horizontal components of the motions as well as the vertical uh, components. And the objective here is then to uh, just um, uh, generate uh, analytical fragility functions for just each bridge. And um, the damage uh, and the achievement 
attainment of different damage states will be evaluated based on some criteria, strain-based criteria that have been recently developed by just uh, Professor Kunas and uh, just uh, his student, uh, Zhu. And we will also try to develop some consistent um, uh, damage criteria based on the displacement. So uh, displacement-based criteria consistent with this uh, um, uh, strain-based uh, criteria. And we will uh, focus on two specific uh, damage states, which will be the repairable, as I mentioned at the beginning, and near collapse damage states. And finally, then in task number three, just we are going to uh, just perform a cost analysis and a bridge life cost uh, uh, slab cycle cost analysis uh, based on all the results collected uh, uh, in the previous tasks. So the overall idea here is really just to provide not only for just each design solution, what is the probability of attaining a specific uh, uh, um, limit state, damage state, but also what is the cost associated to the achievement, uh, the attainment of that damage state. So really to provide at the end, just, uh, just comprehensive as much as possible, probabilistic based and other based evaluation of the just potential damage and potential potential costs, and so in this task number four, with the uh, generation of this uh, 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 development of this performance cost matrix, we're really going to just collect and show in a just possibly clear way the results of this full study. They can really just then inform just Caltrans management, and once again, the uh, can help just make the. Uh, 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 an informed uh, decision about what is the most appropriate level of hazard to utilize for the design of temporary bridges. Um, I will stop here. Uh, this is the plan of our acti activities and I just hope we will have just uh, updates uh, soon. Questions? Yep. I, um, I always struggle when we try to life cycle cost analysis we've never done it well so we got to learn from you so when you go through uh, one hazard is another hazard mm -hmm. you're changing the bridge in some physical way that could sort of cost you money um, how do you decide what changes to make is it a larger column is it a little bit closer there's a lot of different ways you can address the higher cost yeah uh, how, in terms of depending how you figure out the cost so just based on that no, yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, so we are for sure. Please, uh, the question for the oh, okay. Okay, so the question is about the uh, just bridge life cycle cost analysis, and is how what are we going to include in your just cost evaluations? So, uh, well, for sure we're going to include the cost of the bridge itself. So, depending on the hazard level we consider, we are going to end up with different uh, reinforcement ratios within the ballpark of what you know Caltrans is indicating, and with different uh, uh, dimensions for the columns. And so, that for sure, just it will be say a direct cost that will will factor in. But then we will also have the cost associated, for example, to the repair repairable damage or the cost associated to the near collapse. And so what is the cost, the actual cost of a repairable damage in this you know, span? And we also have some nice equations from the literature we can utilize to project the costs in the future in a, in a span, uh, time span of like, for example, five, 50 years, five years, 10 years. And so we will account for all those costs. And we will also consider the costs just relating to uh, the uh, um, uh, 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 transportation, the uh, potential need of having just another solution, another temporary bridge constructed to kind of replace, you know, the current one without interrupting traffic. traffic. So we have, uh, we're going to use state of the art, just methods to really just account for all this, uh, just costs uh, and factor in all these costs in our analysis. So the short answer would, would be, we'd not only consider the cost associated with the, uh, bridge, the construction of the bridge itself, but also the cost associated with the potential damage. That the bridge we undergo, if designed for that level of hazard. So, I mean, I say it's an impossible question, but it also might have the possibly show up in foundation for, for a grid. I'm trying to take it falling down, but that's where often if you want to spend a lot of money on the grid, you start to set it in foundation. So yeah, well, that's a good point. Well, that's for sure something we may need, just we may need to think about. Uh, so currently, we are thinking about the superstructure. I mean, the, the column, whatever is above the ground in terms of structure. And uh, but yeah, I mean, if the the, the foundation becomes critical, and we think that uh, that would be different depending on the le level of hazard we consider. Um, so yes, that might be something we probably need to just include for sure in our uh, evaluations. Yep.
Uh, that's not an explicit objective of this, but, <laughs> but uh, so that's oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the question from uh, Dr. Mbakal is about pulse work and how do we just address that for temporary bridges? Uh, well, it's the pulse work is temporary. It's temporary. It, uh, that's, it's a similar problem, and uh, but it's not <laughs> within the scope of work of this project. But it's interesting because, yeah, that will in theory require probably an approach similar to what you know just we are utilizing here uh, for temporary bridges. Although um, might be, the lifespan might be different, uh, we expect that to be different for uh, uh, post work, but. Um, um, we're not going to just address explicitly that in this uh, in this project, and so um, and it's interesting because, for example, for temporary bridges, there was actually just somehow part of the discussion because really uh, the columns, so the column band is going to be just classical enforced concrete structures that will require not just form works and everything, but then for the superstructure, the idea is really to have something that can quickly just, it's uh, uh, prefabricated uh, with known properties that is supposed to remain linear, which is why we're going to model that as a linear element and just place them between the columns or between the column, column band and the abutment. And so, uh, but we didn't really just include the just uh, form works in the, uh, in, for the columns in this case, uh, just in this project. But I'm hoping probably just some of the findings can be extended, you know, in terms of methodology, can probably just be utilized for, you know, just for MOOCs as well. Yep. Yeah. I do not see any anything online. So, uh, yeah, I think we can give the, yeah. Okay, so, all right, thank you so much. Great presentation. 